here and record here and test test damn yeah, my volume's good all right i think we're ready to go let's do this let's knock it out let's right. crank it let's put all it in right. its place let's put baby in the corner uh <laughs> chat room hold your hold to your butts hold to your butts okay i'll try to be uh i'll try to be a funny guy today here we go oh. it begins in three two one coming up on tms what's up denver Ready Player Scott. Minecraft Park. Avengers people in trouble. Venice Beach is progressive. Burger Woman. <laughs> Simple as that. Major spoilers. V for video games. Your calls and more and emails and other stuff on this episode of The Morning Stream. What a mess. My daughter left a lipstick in her pocket. And before I even noticed, I washed it. I had to try something... So I grabbed Liquid Tide. Guess what? Not one mark of the lipstick remained. Thanks, Mrs. Judy Davis. Can your Liquid Get Out melted lipstick? Liquid Tide did. You'll be surprised at the things Liquid Tide gets out. Surprise yourself. Okay. Um, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? <laughs> This is the morning stream. Hold on to your butts. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to the show, the morning stream show, the podcast show. It's a, it's all new. It's a, it's a hot deal. It's is the podcast. Pod show? It's the pod show. It's a netcast. It's a, what, what other fake names we've we given it over the years? <laughs> A, uh, an internet audio file. Yeah, I think the, uh, IAF. the battle to change its name to Netcast is no longer a battle. I think that. No, I think that that's long gone. I think Leo's given up on that uh, yeah. that tack. At least he hasn't. He's not pushing it anymore, uh, like he was for a while there. Because you mm -hmm. know, podcasts are back, and since Serial decided to call itself a podcast, we were all, you know, subject <laughs> to its whim. <laughs> yeah, but I noticed that. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I hate bringing up the podcast awards again, but uh, we that watched old, it this That weekend, old donkey, or what's the phrase? That old, that old chestnut. chestnut. There you go. Yeah. Uh, the next door neighbors hadn't seen it yet, and they said, oh, well, I, we can't find it. We don't know where to look online. I said, oh, we'll just go to YouTube and then uh, do a search for podcast awards 2015. You'll see the whole thing. Right. And she says, well, do you mind sending it up? We can watch it while we, uh, you know, we were, we were cooking. We were doing a fish fry, Wisconsin fish fry. Mm -hmm. And they said, why don't you pull it up on the TV? So I first had to navigate their internet-enabled TV to try and get, A, it on the network, B, uh, YouTube set up on there, and then go in there and uh, um, and then find it. This is the crazy neighbors, right? Just to clear my These head on this. These are the crazy this. neighbors, yeah. yes. All right. All right. Exactly. Okay. So uh, I get it queued up, and we're watching it. And something I'd, I'd forgotten about um, since I was there is that the hosts, uh, Emily and Chris Jericho, mm -hmm. Emily of Sex With Emily. And yeah. Jericho of Talk with Jericho or whatever it's called. Um, is it a Talk with Jericho or something like that? Talk, something like talk, that. Jer talking Jericho. Jer or? Jericho's talking now. I don't something know. Something like it is. that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I noticed that they kept calling the award itself a podcast. Mm. So, like, they kept saying, oh, look, so and so just won a podcast. Oh, yeah. And the podcast goes too. Yeah. I noticed right. that as well. That's like, is that odd. Are they, are they trying to start something there? Like, trying to start a thing where it's. Uh, uh, let's start calling them podcasts, and then the awards will be a podcast. Like saying, "Oh, uh, the Oscars! You just won a movie." <laughs> oh, the talk is, it's called Talk is Jericho, by the way. Talk is Jericho. That's it. So it's even the truth was worse than the than what we were <laughs> Uh But um, there were there's some there are some rumors, not rumors, but I've heard talk that perhaps our hosts at the 2015 annual podcast awards might have been inebriated during their oh, presentation. Well. They were in uh, Vegas, after all, where that stuff is uh, yeah. practically pumped through the air vents like oxygen, yeah, right? like the sweet <laughs> vanilla sense of the Aria. <laughs> Jericho is loaded. Um, well, anyway, uh, good times. Hey, I've got uh, I got a thing to bring up, and then, I, and then I'm excited about another thing. So I'm going to tell you okay. the first thing here. Let's tell me the first thing. We talk about local stuff when they happen, when something dumb or weird happens in Salt Lake City or in Denver. Uh, right. 
you yeah, know Utah connection and Denver connection. Denver connection, right? We're we're happy to bring those to you first and up front because that's what we do. Because we're from there, we have some loyalty to our hometowns. We like to we like to drag out our skeletons or prop up our wondrous uh, citizens. <laughs> we we may not be Florida, but right. we're happy to uh, to say that we're that Florida is not completely you know that we're not completely off the hook. This is true. So. Denver's in trouble right now. The Denver International Airport, aka aka giant phallic symbol extraordinaire, yeah, swastika and uh, sure. Masons, you know, uh, Illuminati mm. uh, symbol, blue holder. blue horse made of penises, <laughs> right? Uh, exactly, all that penis shaped neckline sparks <laughs> social media friendsly. Friendsly, right? There's a friendsly at the Denver I like playing airport. Words with friendsly, yeah, words with friendsly. <laughs> my favorite game. The heyday of the 3G. <laughs> um, anyway, two TSA agents, they're the folks at the fine uh, airport there that uh, sure. check you, check your stuff, uh, have allegedly changed the screening system at the Denver International Airport in order to grope male passengers. The agency has since removed the two officers. This is according to a hard-hitting news report by Mashable.com. Mm. Uh, quote, these alleged acts are egregious and intolerable, says TSA spokesman Ross Feinstein. Uh, so... This is the deal. Check this out. This has happened more than a dozen times. Passengers were wow. specifically targeted because they were attractive men. Uh, the behavior came to light because a male TSA employee uh, told a female employee that he gropes male passengers. So he basically coughed up the the, the truth. Right, exactly. Bragged about it to one of his uh, yep. co-workers in the break room, the TSA break room. Yep, <laughs> having, a, having a hot pocket and uh, well. explaining himself. <laughs> Says here, uh, he related that when a male he finds attractive comes to the screen, comes to the screening. Let's say one Brian Ibbett, for example. Not saying this happened, but <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there's. I, I'm lacking one certain thing to make that uh, reality. <laughs> says uh, <laughs> says that he'll I say he'll alert another TSA screener to indicate that the scanning computer uh, that has a part what that has the partly or what I don't know what that means. Anyway, uh, what does he that will say? alert another party. TSA screener. To indicate yeah, yeah. to the scanning computer that the party being scanned, there you go, is a female, the female TSA employee said, according to the police reports obtained by CBS4. When the screener does this, the scanning machine will indicate an anomaly in the genital area. Okay, so that goes, boop, boop, not a female. Right. Boop, in boop, other boop. words, in other words, they hit a button saying, okay, woman, a woman stepping into the screener. Oh, no, she must be packing something. Yeah, she's got something in her pants. We got to get this. <laughs> So they Is say that, there's this anomaly, and then that screener has to do a pat down to search that air, quote unquote area. And uh, somebody right. witnessed the pattern. They're super embarrassed. Everybody's pissed. Way to go, Denver. Good job. That's cra- isn't that crazy? That okay. First of all, um, the machines are are tuned so that if you've got basically if if it's expecting a woman yeah. and it finds something in the crotchial region, <laughs> yes. It throws up an alert. The like, crotchial uh, reason, region, yeah. This throws- woman is trying to smuggle a sausage and a couple of tennis balls. <laughs> Whoa. Well, all right, maybe more like a, a cocktail wiener and uh, a couple of walnuts. There you go. And a crushed ping pong ball. Oh. Perfect. Oh, poor guy. Um, yeah, he's. But, yeah, uh, but that that blew my mind actually finding out about that. I mean, I I had no idea that they actually had a a. XX setting and an XY setting on their on their screener. Well, I didn't know that they did that ahead of time. Like when you walked in, I guess they they tell the machine who you are based on what they believe you are. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that at all. I figured you just were who you were. Yeah. I mean, I've had the crotch pat down once, not in Denver. Happened in Anaheim because I had a tic tac in there I forgot about. <laughs> so, by the way, sure. w- word to the wise: don't tr- go through the screener with a tic tac in your pocket. Because I had a little white mint Tic Tac that Kim had given me sitting right there in my, my little sub pocket, right? Yeah. Right and they here. go, uh, sir, is there anything in your pockets? Not the that I'm aware of. pocket that you get. Yeah, exactly. And she goes, uh, I go, not that I'm aware of. Come over here, please. So I go over there. And I felt like saying, can a lady do this? Because I didn't want a dude doing it for some reason. Whatever. <laughs> That's my level of uh, homophobia, sure. I suppose, right there. Sure. It to each his own. But I don't want a dude touching my wiener. That's all I'm saying. So... I get over there. Well, whatever. I don't want a stranger touching me, is, is mm-hmm. the truth. But they pulled me over and did a little bit, 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 patted around my crotch, looking for other stuff. I'm like, guys, back it's a tic tac. A little back of the hand action. Yeah, I said, it's a tic tac. I pulled it out. He says, can you pull it out? I said, yeah, here it is. A little tic tac. This is not a pill. It's not some weird drug. It's a freaking right. tic tac. Anyway, uh, good job, Denver. The, uh, we'll be thinking of you. Well, the other thing, too, by the way, is, you know, how many times in your daily life, just kind of going around, 
do you come across somebody whose gender you're maybe not able to identify immediately? Mm, like the, the 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 Julius Sweeney Pat character. When's the last time I saw a Jared Leto movie? Hmm. Let me think about that. <laughs> That's terrible. Maybe Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Um, but uh, so you know, do, in those cases, do they do they just switch it one way or the other and? Oh, good point. Best. Good point. I don't know. I wish we had. Do we have anyone who's a screener in TSA who listens to the show? Because there's got to be. First of all, but they'll they'll write in and say <laughs> this is overblown. It only happened bad. Blah, 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 whatever. One guy, you know, they'll have some explanation for this. But also, you could give us an inside scoop on that kind of thing. Yeah, I think if if we did have any TSA uh, uh, listeners, they left during like one of the first jury segments. Oh yeah, dude, totally. Because <laughs> we've, I think we've. Uh, We've had our say about the TSA and uh, during one of his travel. Yeah, we've had our way with them. <laughs> Traveling, <laughs> maybe not as much as they've had their way with us. Certainly, but, uh, certainly. So yeah. I, I, I'm very curious though. If someone is, write in. Yeah, we'd call love in. to hear. Actually, I'd love to. I'd love to get some insight. We'll keep you anonymous if you want. To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if a lady walks in there and they think it's a no, no, no maybe get it the other way around. Let's say they think it's a lady going in, but it's a man. Mm-hmm. No, that's the other way. Man goes in, but it's a woman. Right. Does her lack of extra stuff in the crotchetorial region, does trigger? that... No, I don't think so. I that think, wouldn't trigger anything. I think basically if they don't know, they probably set it to male. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and basically we could be letting somebody through with a um, a, a chunk of C4 strapped to their crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it'll say, all right, ignore that zone. That's probably nothing there, so... Yeah. They were fascinated with my wallet last time. They kept looking at it in there. Stop the thing and look oh, at really? it a lot. Yeah, Is my, it your hoard wallet? My or hoard wallet. No, nope, my hoard wallet. Love that yeah. thing. It's going to last yeah. me a lifetime. I'll never get another wallet. I've, I've probably gone through and destroyed several wallets since you've had that hoard wallet. Yeah, it's Currently, I'm on a uh, Rock in the Shield wallet. Oh, very nice. Let me see. I hold yeah. it up. Oh, look at that. There you go. Do I have my wallet here? I don't. Oh, yeah, I do. Here. Damn chat room, look. This is my hoard wallet. It was handmade by a guildie. One side is the hoard. The other side says GURP and some oh, nice you lettering. Like you like that game? Very well made, hand, <laughs> hand, handmade uh, wallet by hand, hand leathered, whatever. And it's just uh, as solid as a rock, that thing. Yes. All right, Brian, you have something going yes. on right now that is all very exciting. It only has a couple of days left of uh, before it funds uh, or before it finishes funding. Uh, and it's rad, and it's a new album, and it's super cool. And we've talked about it a bunch. And tell me more. And what do we have to play? For I don't think with there's it? anything left to tell. No, mm. I'm kidding. It's, so it's uh, the latest Andrew Allen uh, album from Coverville Records. This is the fourth in the series of um, nerd franchises franchises that have music associated with them that we can uh, that we can have some fun with. So basically, uh, it is a Star Wars cover album, and uh, it's covers of a bunch of music from the Star Wars universe. Theme songs, of course, and uh, um, it is, I will say this, it's very original trilogy heavy, because I think you've got to be in this case, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, when you, if you lined 10 of us up yep, and said, all right, name some Star Wars songs, you'd be like, all right, well, there's the main theme, there's the Cantina Band, there's the Han Solo and the Princess, there's the, um, the Imperial March, there's Yoda's theme. Uh, the probably the only one that would cross your mind from the the prequels would be Duel of the Fates because that one was it was huge when it, it was came out really good yeah and it was really good and they had a great video go along with it and stuff like that yeah so, John Williams is not the problem with those trilogies we'll, we'll just make that statement no, now he's no, the, he's the man yeah not at all yeah so uh, so we're 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 actually doing covers or did covers they went to the studio a couple of weeks ago uh, while I was in Vegas they were in Nashville recording with uh, Truman House Byron House and Brad Esau on saxophone we've added a saxophonist. And uh, uh, we've got two days left to fund this thing. We're only about fifteen hundred dollars away, so I think we're we're really close. We're going to hit it. We're definitely going to fund. Sure. Um, let's play. Uh, I put together a um, a quick under three minute uh, sampler of the ten songs that uh, that we record or they recorded. Um, and uh, let's listen to that, and I'll talk a little bit more about it after that. Now yeah. we can talk actually during this. Sure, sure. Too, so. so everyone, guess what you think this first one is. <laughs> Here it is. Nice fade in there. Yeah. Oh, I'm all about the fade in. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's uh, 
so the, it's not just saxophone added as like a little bit of flavor. There's the saxophone is put in here pretty dang prominently. There's some more. I gotta tell you though that sax at the beginning that's really exciting to me. Oh yeah, that in there. and the uh, we we've got that in the Imperial March too. Let's get some more. Here. Sweet. Yeah, gotta have this one. Oh, it's interesting you went with a f- kind of a fast paced arrangement on that. Yeah, um, I left all the arrangement stuff up to Andrew. I. I... Oh look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I gave him a list of uh, the songs. I said, all right, pick from these dozen songs. And I gave him samples of them and said, listen to these and and put them together. Great. Here's some more. Oh, This one always made me melancholy as a kid. Yeah, probably also not, you know, not expecting the faster version on this one. Then. Yeah, yeah, I didn't for sure. But when I'd hear it as a kid, I'd think, oh, this is when the Empire's winning. This is when things are rough. Yep. You know, it's, it has a it has its sense of like, oh no, what are, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> well, the only thing that's not playing, or that's playing when the uh, empire is not winning, yeah. is that Ewok uh, Jub Jub song, whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, this is good. Oh, slow it down. Oh, these are great, dude. Yeah. Oh, this might yeah, be that, my favorite album. That one's my favorite, too. Yeah, that's it's love extremely that well done. Yeah, that sax just adds so much. So you can see the saxophone is pretty upfront in this. Like it's, I think it's. You know, it's, uh, you know what? Now that I'm hearing it, yeah, I'm not sure I could hear it without it now. Like that is so <laughs> it adds so much to these songs. It's really great. Yoda's theme lounge version. Yeah, that makes me want to, I don't know, take a trip. Ooh, this is pretty serious. Yep. You will die! (laughs) Yeah, that's totally like uh, Emperor throwing Vader down the pit, or Vader throwing Emperor down the pit music. Right. Well, that's uh, Duel of Fates right there. Is that Duel of Fates? Yep, that's... uh... That's great. What a great collection, dude. Yeah. So uh, here's the here's the scoop, and this is the part I am I'm the most excited about. So, how many of those kickstarts have you done where you've backed, and it's like, all right, now I've got to wait, uh, you know, a month before I get anything, or six months, or whatever. How about most of them? But yeah, pretty not, much most. Of not them. true in this case, huh? No, um, because uh, we've already done the we've already gone to the studio. We've actually already gotten the songs mixed and mastered. Um, that as soon as we fund, like this week, which um, basically I think Wednesday, tomorrow or Wednesday is the ending date. Let's let's say it's tomorrow, All right. and that way if there's Wednesday, then there's a little bit of a uh, uh, a gap. But um, definitely get your get your orders in or get your uh, pledges in to back this thing. Um, when we fund by the end of this week, I'm going to be able to send out. Uh, digital tracks to everybody who backs this thing. Oh, that's great. And um, you can get in on it at $10, right? I mean, like 10 bucks. Wow. That's... Easy peasy. We, but we've we've also got... Uh, oh, sorry. Keep talking. Oops, sorry. Did not we've got uh, artwork from you. We've got artwork from Steve Hamaker. We've got t-shirts. We've got um, uh, a USB drive that's got uh, uh, all of Andrew Allen's music. So not just this album, but all of the demo tracks, all of his arrangement tracks, like when he's figuring out what he wants the song to sound like, we've gonna, we're going to have those on there, plus all the stuff like that from all the other albums. So all the music, the released music from all the other albums, but also all the demo tracks and um, unreleased versions and things like that. So Amazing. I think yeah. that's all great. Uh, if you are excited about it as I am, then you want to go support it. And look, ten bucks as a ticket in is just ridiculously low. Exactly. Uh, so uh, Coverville, or so you want to go to? Um, there's no Coverville in this at all. You go to uh, tiny.cc/slash Star Wars Jazz. Brilliant. And, uh, that'll take you right to the Kickstarter page. Very cool. Let's uh, do it. Let's do it, folks. Let's, let's get kill this it. thing funded without any any worries like we had last year of like me watching the clock and seeing <laughs> F5, F5. 
Exactly. I, I guess Come now. On, I guess. Fine. I guess now it over. It auto refreshes now or whatever, so you don't have to do that as much. Exactly. Yeah. Lucky you. Yes. All right. Well, and final news before we call Daryl. And by the way, we're gearing up here for our Mash Week of trivia. Yeah. Very excited. I started reading Ready Player One. I'm deep into it, and I now I now understand why everybody thinks that's one of the great books of the last ten years. It is fan freaking tastic. Isn't that great? And uh, talk about speaking to a very mm-hmm. specific group of people of which we belong yep. pretty wholeheartedly. And it feels good to belong to that. You know, you it hear totally those references does. and go, "Oh my gosh, I am so glad." That I not only get all these, but I can kind of represent from that group. But beyond that, even mm-hmm. the, the cultural references and all that stuff, yes, amazing, great, love it, and and it doesn't in a way that doesn't feel Pandery. artificial. Yeah, 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 I don't feel like right. I'm being fan service to. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm. I feel like the stuff I thought was important is important, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Uh, but moreover, he's painting a world that is grim and dark and rad, mm-hmm. like. It's not just the world building happening behind the scenes, behind all those references, is really, right. really good. So, yeah, you were all yeah, right. Those stacks of motorhomes and. Uh... Oh, the stacks, dude. That's such a great <laughs> idea. It really is. So, uh, you were all right. I was, I was wrong to wait so long. I don't know why I put it off so long, but I'm really, really enjoying it. I had a bunch of downtime this weekend where I had to lay around a lot and I read that book and it was fantastic. Oh, so. you, you went through it the whole thing, huh? Not the whole thing. I'm almost done, though. Okay. Getting okay. there. <clears throat> so, uh, but my review thus far has been. Uh, that's a hell of a thing. And now I am genuinely curious about how Spielberg will actually make that yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, being able to translate that thing because so much of it takes place in in virtual space. Mm-hmm. I but, hope they make uh, a reference in there about how he made some comment about how there are no there there are no Indiana Jones Jones movies before or since Crystal Skull. There's no. <laughs> it's all crap. And I wonder if he'll bring that up in his yeah, adaptation. Probably not. They'll probably be a part of it that's not going to be uh, not going to be in there. <laughs> yeah, they kind of rip on the prequels a bit, stuff like that. So uh, anyway, it's fantastic. My gosh, what a what a what a crazy cool. idea! What a great book. If you're a gamer, if you're a movie movie lover, if you like comic books, and if you just like good dystopian fiction, mm-hmm. it's awesome. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what he does next. That's my biggest thing: is what does he do to, yeah. to trump that? Yeah, because this no has idea. been a while. So I mean, his follow up has got to be. Got to be coming forthwith. Yeah, forthwith right. is right. Forthwith. Brian, I'm going to add Daryl to this call now. I don't want you to be alarmed. I don't want you to freak out, but it is Daryl coming on. He's bit, he's a bit of a freak. I'm going to tiptoe around him a bit. <laughs> Just kidding. Here we go. <laughs> Join us now for Stump a Mash Nerd, brought to you by... Brought to you by Facebook.com slash Save Our Sammy, a page trying to raise money to pay off Sammy the dog's medical bills. Aww. Check it out today. That's Facebook.com slash Save Our Sammy. Oh, he got me. He had me a dog and Sammy. My first dog was uh, also named Sammy when I was very, like, when I was a little toddler. Mm. I only uh, know about Sammy through pictures. Oh, weird. I had a yeah. Sam as well, but she, that was when I was a teenager. Mm. And uh, she gave birth to a dog named Sugar. And you can tell that my sister's named all our dogs. Okay. Daryl, are you there? <laughs> I am. Well, listen to this. Okay. <laughs> Everybody just tuck right in because that music and those helicopter sounds can only mean one thing. It's time for us to launch into MASH Trivia Week. <laughs> I almost got the lyrics version, but I, I changed my mind because I knew Brian would know. Uh so, Daryl, we're doing it different today. No Star Trek today. We're doing a whole week of MASH trivia, and all three of us are participating, which is also unprecedented. Uh, I don't exactly know how this is going to work, but we'll find out shortly. Right, how are you feeling? How you, are you good? Do you feel prepared? It'll be a nice vacation from Trek. Okay, wow. well, good. I kind of agree. A Trekation. It's like going to Rise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's, laughs> you got your uh, little onesie, towel looking white robe thing on? Because... We're in Ryza. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Have, have some pleasure. Um, all right. Here it is. It's MASH I've week. Got, I've got my Horgon. We are, we are going to break down the rules real quick for people. First my rule w- First rule of MASH week is you do not talk about MASH week. This is all Mike's writing. <laughs> of course. Second yeah. rule of MASH week is you do not talk about MASH week. And finally, third rule is this is your first time you have to... What? This is your first time you have to play. Okay. Whatever. Fourth rule. So these are these are directly from Fight Club. Yeah. Oh, they, are they? Okay. Yeah. Third rule. This is your first night at Fight Club. You have to fight. So um, this. What's this Walter Donovan one? Is that also from Fight Club? 
Uh, Fourth one? No. Okay, no. it says, you have to decide as a team what the correct answer is, so we're deciding as a team. You will either win as a team or fail as one, so unlike Walter Donovan, <laughs> you will have to choose wisely. Oh, I get it. Uh, five, pick your answer from the list and go to the URL to see if you're correct. So we have a URL. Nobody gets to click it yet. Only Brian and I have visibility on it uh, in the notes. Here is our question. All right. And are you, you going to do today in MASH history as well today, Daryl? Did you prepare oh, that way? No, I am totally unprepared. I'll do that. some MASH trivia. Hold on. Trivia. <laughs> I just thought of that. Yeah. Okay. Funny. Uh, all right. Here we go. Here's our question. You guys ready for the question? Here it is. Let's do it. Yep. Hawkeye was not a fan of the food on the base. He grew tired of eating the same thing every day. One of the uh, options was liver. What was the other option for entree in the mess hall? Here are our options. So I assume these are the ones he most hated. It must be, right? Yeah, I remember there was an episode where he revolted. Like he he wanted oh. to lead a revolt against the food in the mess hall. Correct. I think you're right. So it's, I, know, I think I already know the answer. Anyway, it's A, chicken, B, pork, C, fish, D, beef. D beef. That's what happens to a cow when you kill it. D beef. It. <laughs> it's uh, Sheila Booth in, uh, <laughs> in English is D beef. <laughs> <laughs> Which is French for the beef, right? That's right, yes. Um, so so there's our question. There's our uh, possible answers. Answers: Chicken, pork, fish, and beef. Which one of those goes with the liver that he was sick of? Uh, I think it was a very specific episode where he really got uh, enraged and created yeah. a, a revolt. And people I don't remember what he, what he did. Like he, uh, yeah, he stood up in the middle of mess hall mm -hmm. on the table or something and said... No I'm more. mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Exactly. And they all pounded on their trays and something like that. Yeah, this but is I can't remember what the, what the result was. Like, did he get them to change the food or did he... It's entirely... Daryl, is there a business meeting <laughs> he, happening near you? What's happening over there? He probably, he probably got it changed and then it just went back to normal the next episode. Yeah, right? probably, probably. That's what yeah. they do in that show. There's a lot of resetting on MASH. Right. Just kind of reset. Uh, all right. Well, while we uh, think about it, let's do a little uh, MASH trivia. You ready for this? Check this out. Hold on. According to IMDb, I, IMDb, as of November 2011, the series finale, Goodbye, Farewell, Amen, was still the most watched television broadcast in television history. It was watched by approximately 125 million viewers. The finale aired from 8, 8 a.m. or sorry, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. on February 28, 1983. Uh, let's see, New York City, something, something. Uh, oh. Listen to this. New York City Public Works noted the highest water usage of any given time in the city's history. This is due to the fact that three minutes after the finale ended, approximately 77% of New York's uh, residents flushed their toilets. <laughs> it doesn't say what the show is the, role, the most watched in 2011. What was that? It doesn't say. Oh. Um, wasn't it a Dancing with the Stars thing or something? Yeah, weird. I'm not sure. Was it? It could have been. That sucks if that's true. Ugh. Really? Dancing by the Stars? It? Um, Someone in the chat room find that for us? It was the King of Queens. Sh oh, I'm kidding. That'd be bad, too. <laughs> uh, McLean Stevenson, who played Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake, died of a heart attack on the 15th of February, 1996. The very next day, the 16th of February, Roger Bowen, who played Lieutenant Colonel Henry Blake in the movie, died of the exact same cause. One day oh, apart, weird. the two Henry Blakes died. Mm. There were no survivors. And, and as we know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're gonna do. You're gonna give me a little, uh, a little uh, taply there. What happened? Give yeah, it. Keep I going. Okay. Oh, it looks like it might have been American Idol. Oh. Like the the most popular watched shows of all time are almost always Super Bowls, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. the the most most watched TV programs, but. Uh, in 2011, the second uh, one up there would be an American Idol finale. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, so MASH had the the most watched regular series finale. Mm -hmm. Do you want to guess at what the second most watched? Lost. Uh, Lost is, is it? There it is, number 54 on the list. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. I'm way long. Okay. Uh, duh. Okay, Not now Seinfeld. I gotta think. Seinfeld's wider. number four, so you're Seinfeld four. Closer. Seinfeld four. Seinfeld four. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I gotta think broader, don't I? Yes, and and remember, it's a percentage of households, not a number of viewers, because that's got to be sure. You know, 
There's no way to really track that accurately. Right, anyway. Exactly. Okay, I'd say Newhart. Bob Newhart. Uh, Newhart was number 16 on the list. Uh, um, I'll give you one more hint, and, and then we'll call it uh, good. But nine, uh, Seinfeld was on NBC as part of Must See TV. Yeah. So were number two and number five on Cheers. the list. Cheers. Cheers was number two. Uh, oh. Cosby Show. No. Oh. No, you got number two. Number two is Cheers. You What's win. number one? What was no, oh, One was MASH. Mash. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the whole the point fugitive, of bringing this up. The Fugitive, back in 1967, the third most watched uh, regular series finale because... Uh, um, 45 percent, or 40, almost 46 percent, of uh, televisions were tuned to that, but there was a smaller number of viewers because because of back then, right? Because it was 1967, right? There weren't as many TVs as it turns out. I know, people didn't have uh, uh, toilet or uh, uh, TVs in their bathrooms. I won't toilets. have a talking box in my house. People would say, exactly. They rebelled. Um, one final note. This just kind of sure. made me smile. In an interview recently before his death, Harry Morgan. Said he wanted to play Colonel Potter forever. Oh, mm. he never yeah. wanted to not play him. Isn't that sweet, Daryl? That's sweet. That's good. It is, I isn't it? I want to play Colonel Potter forever. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Daryl, let's get back to your question then, or our question. This is really throwing off my, my rhythm because it's all of us, I guess. It was, uh, it was chicken, pork, fish, or beef that went along with the liver that he was having uh, too much of there on the base. Let's go around the table. Daryl, what do you think the answer is? Well, based on the first season, I would say pork, because it's always pork chops all the time. Seemed like it was a lot of pork chops then. Brian? I would say fish, because of their proximity to uh, water being more available than, than other kinds of meat. Right. That would be easier to get in or, or to harvest on site. Right. Right. Um, I'm going to say fish because my memory of it is he was so sick of it. He had a line that got a good laugh track moment where he said, <laughs> he's, he's, <What>? he's <laughs> where he said, I've, I've had a river of, I've had a river of liver and an ocean of fish. Do you guys remember okay. this? I do. Remember he goes, that, yeah. I'm sick of it. I'm made of the stuff. Something, something, something. I've had a river of liver and an ocean of fish. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? I, re I have a very distinct memory of that. So I, I think, think it's fish. Brian yeah. thinks it's I, fish. I totally remember that, yeah. We outvote Daryl, but Daryl, yeah. I'll, I'll allow you to give us any compelling reason why you think this is a bad move. Oh, no, you're probably right. I'm sure that since he put those two things together, that's what Ice Worm's looking at. All right, I'm clicking it. Here we go. <laughs> URL not found. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're, you've got to test your links, dude. Hold on. Oh, it's at iceworm.org slash mash slash mash01.htm. Maybe it's an L at the end. Oh, it is. He left off the L. Okay. Phew. Mash week one, question one. The answer is C, fish. Ding, 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 ding. Yay. We are we are a winner. Congratulations. Okay. You're a winner. Uh, they no serve liver clips. and fish. What? Say again? No audio, no audio clips? Yeah, I got one right here. You are correct. In your assumption, my young apprentice. Oh, good lord! Wow, <laughs> I was thinking he was going to have some audio from the. Uh... I did too. Let's see if there's more. Uh, if you play, oh, play this if you were also correct. Here we go. You are incorrect. No, nope, sorry. <laughs> here's here's some video. Sorry. Here we go. Second taste, Doc. Yes, please. Potatoes. Fine. Green corn. Thank you. Now it's, now it's gonna blow. The entree today. Here it comes. Steady. We have liver or fish. I didn't hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's season one, episode eleven, by the way. Okay. So. Uh, oh, I should have seen that. Yeah, you probably did see it. It's he, probably good that they didn't have. I mean, I know they were in the uh, the army, but. They really didn't have quick access to uh, firearms yeah. for <laughs> to be able to uh, yeah. go postal on the, the mess hall. Good point. Uh, well, there you go. He goes on. I'm sure. Let's see if he does the river of fish thing. Because it isn't possible. Or river of liver. It's inhuman. The Geneva Convention prohibits the killing of our taste buds. Easy. I simply cannot eat the same food every day. Hold fish, on. liver, day after day. I've eaten a river of liver and an ocean of fish. I had it. I got Yay. it. There you go. Well done. Ding, ding, ding. All right. Good job, everyone. Uh, we are one for one. We'll see how we do well, for the next what week. What would you have said week. if it was beef instead of fish? <laughs> <laughs> a river of liver and a... 
a spleef of beef. A spleef of beef. <laughs> I would eat a spleef of beef. Be all right. You'd smoke a spleef of beef every day. Uh, Daryl, do you want to? <laughs> do you have a game for us, or is this weird this week? How do you want to do that? Uh, I don't know. What should I do? I should know. I do it, or sh- or do, should I do a Trek one, or should I not do anything? I don't know. Or should, should I make up some dumb mash thing that I have make up a dumb mash thing? Numbers for a, a base or a <laughs> Star Trek uh, NCC number. NCC number. <laughs> <laughs> The seven four no, what was their thing? What was eight oh sixty third was no four oh seven seven was the, yeah. the mash unit. Yeah. But eight oh sixty third was their their rival. That would have been funny though. You could have said, <laughs> you know, I don't know. NCC eight oh six three. Riker serial, serial number <laughs> or mash unit number. <laughs> the double O seventy seven. Hmm. <laughs> uh yeah, you can do what you want, Daryl. You just throw it throw what you want. Mash officer or Star Trek officer. Uh, I don't even have that. Um, well, here's something sort of related. And the same Rizzo. <laughs> wasn't the Mary Tyler Moore show on at the same time? Uh, probably crossover, yeah. yeah. some overlap, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was this actor... Oh, shoot. Well, let's just do it anyway. Was Ted Knight ever in Star Trek, yes or no? <laughs> it's Ted Knight ever in Star Trek. Wow. Ted Knight, you Ted, mean... Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. That Ted Knight. <laughs> um... Ever on Star Trek? I'm gonna I bet, say I better no. look up some mash ones for next. Yeah, time. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah. You lazy butt. Okay, I'm gonna say no. I don't think Ted Knight was ever on Star Trek. So either he played Carter Winston in the animated series. Damn it! Also the Survivor. That one doesn't count. Does it count? <laughs> they probably just walked next door and said, "Hey, Ted, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing some back at the Hall of Justice and League of, Legion of Doom quotes. Oh, come over here and be on our show. Like that was that's terrible. <laughs> Bye now. All right. I'm not buying that one, dude. Where are we? Television highlights of the news of yesteryear. Let's do some morning news brought to you by. Do you like low-budget zombie film fun? Yes. Do you like to see attractive women kicking the crap out of douchebag guys all while fighting off zombie hordes with the help of a crack secret agent? Of course. Is uh, $12.99 worth an hour and 24 minutes of your life? Entirely. All right. Well, if yes, if you answered yes to any of the following or previous questions, then check out the Come Get Some DVD at ComeGetSomeTheFilm.com. Yeah. That's ComeGetSomeTheFilm.com. Go check that out, you guys. It's interesting. I think it's worth your time. Uh, all right. We got some news. Let's do some news oh. items. Children are going to design a new national park in Minecraft. Nice. School children in Adelaide, Australia... Uh huh. Have been invited to it to design a national park. I can't. Do that. I can't do the voice. <laughs> That's good. No, that was pretty good. In Minecraft, uh, that could be built into reality. Students uh, age nine to twelve have been asked to create their designs in the blocky three D world. The results could be incorporated to uh, upgrades to existing national parks around Adelaide. The government has set aside nearly ten point four million Australian dollars, which is what five point four million e- uh, euros. Pounds, yeah. Or is that pounds? That's pounds. They should use a hashtag for pounds, like pound sign. <laughs> that would be right. Then you're, you're like, uh, then you're trending. Five point four million is trending on Twitter. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> you could never say how much money anything was on Twitter without it looking like a hashtag. Right. That's a bad idea. Now that I think about it. <laughs> um. Anyway, they'll give. They've got this set aside for these redesigns, and they were looking for a new way to engage young people in the process. "Quote: The competition is part of a cultural engagement project, asking people of all ages what sorts of facilities that would encourage them to spend more time in national parks, aka spend more money, Australian dollars." Uh, reads the National Resources, a paper there, uh, Adelaide website can or will announce or has announced the prize so brian Mm -hmm. you want to make a uh i mean i'm guessing what it is it's like oh i'll build a little like visitor center thing right that would work well down somewhere what's great about this is that most public parks already have creepers so yep that part of it is already taken care of yep don't look at them too long or they'll blow up (laughs) uh i think it's kind of a cool idea and i think uh, if kids i mean how cool it'd be to be the kid who Designed it, got a got you know the prize won, and then gets to go down there and hang out in the thing he built. I think that would so be if you, amazing. If you do a hill, yeah, like let's say you design a hill in this park, is it? It's going to be blocky, right? It's going to be well. Uh, in, <laughs> I mean, in Minecraft, it will be. One would assume they would be more granular in real life. Like okay. They would, uh, well, they would who have, knows? I mean, if they take this kids, you know, maybe mm-hmm. it's little plateaus or little uh, levels. Well, it's kind of like so. Daryl made if he's still listening. He made a version of the Enterprise in Minecraft, and I right. walked around in it, and it was cool. Um, but it was 
kind of low resolution. What you think of the blocks as dots per inch. Mm -hmm. The more blocks you use for every corner, every twist, every turn, the more granular it becomes, the more complicated sure. it becomes, but the more high resolution it becomes and less blocky it becomes. So my thinking is they would take they would do these designs as basically sketches. I mean, that's all these are going to be. And then the final design will not be a big blocky thing. Although, if they want to give real tribute to the Minecraft origin of the thing, they should make it blocky. You know? Yeah, right, right. Have a little blocky pigs exactly. walking around. Maybe have a little um uh like a little fountain area that is all blocky just in tribute to the Minecraft kids. Yes. Yes, that'd be perfect. Or have a little yeah. Steve character, the little block man walking around somewhere. Oh, there you go. A little statue of Steve. Yeah. Like with a bird on his hand. Perfect. Caw. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I'm short on a, I'm short on both electrolytes and uh, and uh, calories today, and Aww. nothing coming out of my mouth sounds normal to me. But I, I assume from the chat room's reaction, everything's going fine. Uh, Avengers, Avengers, Avengers is this uh, this weekend. You going to see it? You all planned out? Of course. I'm. We're going to see it Friday night. I don't know where or with whom, but um, uh, the plan is. To uh, that we're going to meet up with um, Josh and Jen down in Colorado Springs, see it at the north end of uh, Colorado Springs with my uncle and his wife and cool. buddy Don and Tina and I. Pregnant Jen. Pregnant Jen. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I hope the uh, hope the rumbling and the the excitement don't um, jar the baby. Yeah, don't put her in a D box. That'd be bad. Those things that shake you around. Have you done a D box before? No, I haven't done a D box. You not heard of the D box? I've not even heard of the D box. Oh, dude! I've you're... seen a few D bags at the movies, but never a D box. <laughs> yeah, no, the D box. The D box is like a special chair. The the tickets cost way more to get them, but yeah. they have these in certain theaters. They have these cordoned off, and you'd sit in these chairs, and they're tied to like, for example, if you see Furious Seven. Yeah. Every crash and rumble and turn, <laughs> you move it in the chair. It around, basically, in, one, in, in each chair. Yeah, yeah. And you you feel every vibration. You move in directions where there's a turn or whatever. Uh, big explosions cause it, kind of jerk back, that kind of stuff. Why is the rest of the world so far behind Utah? <laughs> I don't know our movie movies. Technology. We take our movies seriously. I think what ha I, Honestly, I, I, there's something to this. We have a huge uh, population of children in this state. Lots of kids. And... Because of that, you know, measured sort of youth contingent of the of the population, a lot of stuff is sort of geared around them. And I would say both the restaurant world, like Eric's always talking about how many freaking family restaurants there are in Utah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. so there's tons of families. So in this case... They're not going to open a bar. <laughs> the movie, right. And movies are a great thing for people to go do. Like, that's a great waste of your time. Or not waste of your time, but a use of your, your leisure time. And there's so many kids and so many reasons for them to go that they just kind of go all out. So I will be going. I could do D box, but I probably won't because mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't know. Who cares? I just like movies. Um, yeah. But I'll see it. I'll I'll reserve my seats. I'll yeah. arrive just before, and not have to worry about fighting oh. out where I got to sit. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, you guys got to get on it over there. I don't know what's I know. happening. I wish we would because I love that idea. I love the idea of being able to say, "Nope, these are the seats I want. There's nobody in front of us." And could I also reserve these other seats around us and yeah. just <laughs> keep people from sitting in them? And for the record, uh, for the record, not for the record, for the record, for the record uh, there are there are theaters in Utah that do not feature reserved seating. Sure, it's just sure. the ones that do are dominating. <laughs> They're kicking their ass. <laughs> um, hold, on, hold on one second. I'm, I'm, there's a uh, there's a, a wayward teenager in the basement. Oh, wonderful! What's he got? Yeah, it's right in the corner of the couch here. Dad, sitting I've, on the blanket. I've flushed uh I flushed the cat down the toilet. Um <laughs> one of uh one of his buddies came over for D and D and left his wallet on the um uh on the, the couch oh, for no. some reason. That's weird. Did you get yeah. it back to him? Oh well, I guess it's yeah, fine because you guys aren't what... jerks. No, of course. It's not yeah. like you emptied it and spent it all on booze. There was or no money in there. <laughs> These kids are <laughs> broke. That's true, dude. <laughs> They just have a wallet just to have one. Exactly. Um, it's like a library card and a, um, yeah. a business card from a Denny's manager or something in there. That sounds about right to me. <laughs> anyway, Age of Ultron opening this weekend. Yeah, and can't wait the, to see it. They've been doing the, you know, the, the rounds with the, the PR stuff and you know right. the press junket. Mm -hmm, all that stuff. The one that you know we talked about Robert Danny Jr. walking out of his because that guy was <laughs> right. a douche. I saw them all on the uh, Good Morning American or Good Morning America American. Good, Good Morning, morning American. American. <laughs> Good Morning America. I like it. Show on uh, Thursday morning or Friday morning, and yeah. uh, I yep. don't know. Look, they, 
they they're always really happy to do these things. Mm -hmm. They always look maybe like they've been up all night drinking. Yeah, I get a sense that they're all pretty pooped. Downey Jr.'s got the sunglasses on, the dark sunglasses on, and yeah. they're all laughing. And yep, they all seem kind of kind of hammered. Yeah. Uh, well, they're in a little bit of trouble right now because uh, two of their stars, anyway, Jeremy Renner and Chris Evans, called Scarlett Johansson's character a slut and a whore. <laughs> In an interview. Uh, it's, Two it's, new superpowers for the character that I think we were previously unaware of. Yeah, they called her a slut and a, quote, complete whore when interviewer asked them what they thought of fans' expectations that she would end up with one of them. Some fans have called the remark sexist while others have maintained they were being sarcastic. I would also like to sarcastic. maintain they were being sarcastic. Good lord. People yeah. really get over it. And get oh, people, about relax. Hey, we're, let's, let's, say, let's do it this way. What if somebody had said... Look, and I'm all about people, when people are in positions of power, they shouldn't say things that they get to say only because they're in a position of power, right? Like men versus women or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, at least how it's been traditionally. However, I got no problem if you want to call Chris Evans and Jeremy Renner or their characters, because that's the context here, call them complete douchebags and uh, what's the other word for bad men? I can't think of another man. Uh, um like a misogynist? Or yeah, a, misogy uh, uh, chauvinist pig. Call him that. Chauvinist pig. There we go. Uh, or dicks or something else. It's fine. Everybody call each other what you want. You know they were kidding. That doesn't make him sexist. If, if it were if it were Scarlett Johansson being interviewed and saying, oh, well, would you would would uh, Black Widow ever end up with uh, Hawkeye? And she says, oh, no, he's such an a-hole. <laughs> right. Nobody you would know? care. But again, that's the same. You know, I, I there are going to be people that write in and go, well, that's because historically men are in a position of power. And so they say things that when they say things like that, that's them abusing their power. And women can say it because for the same reason I can't, you know, for example, I couldn't see my, I couldn't walk into my black friend and call him the N word, mm -hmm. but he right. can call, yes. he can call me a cracker and a honky and a whatever other word he wants. Right. There's, well, why? there's different levels of severity. Right. Right. I think if they would have said, if they would have used, even though they were in the uh, in the UK, if they would have used the C word, then I'd say that there's probably <laughs> yeah, there could have been more some issue right there. Sure, you're right. Like, that certain word words. flows out like that's like that's in the newspaper headlines out there in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, slut's pretty bad. <laughs> slut is pretty well. Horror, I'd say, is worse. Horror's worse than yeah. It's pretty. It, it's, look, if they could have thought through it, probably shouldn't have said it, but. I don't yeah. think that this makes them sexists. I think it makes them stupid. That's all. Mm -hmm. They're just dumb guys. We're all dumb guys in the end. Yeah. Uh, someone's uh. in the chat room. Just one black friend, eh? Yeah. I'm just saying. If I, <laughs> I have lots of black friends, and they aren't. Some of my best friends are black. They're not all on the internet either. I have neighbors. Some of, some of my best friends have black friends. Right. <laughs> You know what? That's a funny cartoon, actually. I may have to draw that. There you go. A Please very white man in like a sweater saying, yeah. I have some of my best friends have black friends. That's a great idea. <laughs> uh, Venice Beach of Beach officials want you to uh, go there topless. They want your boobs out. So sluts can bathe the topless. Well, right, that's, awesome. what they're, that's what they're saying. <laughs> that's not what we're saying, everybody. That's Brian kidding. <laughs> kidding. Just, that's me being sarcastic. We're joking. See? See, it's all a callback. Don't make your judgments. Leaders in the Los Angeles Beast Beach District Beast of Venice have asked <laughs> that women be allowed to sunbathe nude on the beach, saying they want equality for more than European and more of a European feel on the popular tourist destination. Local media reported on Wednesday, the neighborhood council Ooh. voted 12 to 2 to approve the recommendation. Wow. What if that was all horny dudes who made I'm the wondering, vote? Okay, so how do you become a leader in the Los Angeles Beach District? I don't know how that comes. <laughs> I'm king of the beach. <laughs> <laughs> you want to fight? No. Well, that makes me king. The surf punks have uh, decided that there's a uh, surf yeah. Nazis. Well, the surf Nazis. <laughs> they're going to be. Surf Nazis must lead. That's what it is. That's right. Venice Neighborhood Council 12 to 2. Uh, that seems like pretty good support. This is what they say. Yeah. It, support, or it supports women being afforded the same rights as men to sunbathe topless. Uh, the county. What do, or, sorry. Think, what do you think the, uh, the the gender makeup of the Venice Neighborhood Council is? I'm guessing Just it's mostly dudes. <laughs> mostly dudes. Mostly dudes. I'd say ten men, two women. <laughs> yeah, ten to two. That sounds or, right. Or is twelve to two? Yeah. I, I um look here's a here's a belief I have and I could be wrong but I'm gonna throw it out there. Sure. If culturally we just all stopped being picky about it and just said all women all the time should be topless 
maybe then eventually we wouldn't guys wouldn't freak out when they see a topless lady yeah it would take there would be a um i don't know there would be, be a pretty severe transition period mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. where you know you'd walk down venice beach and be like uh, you know and, and and basically i can't not stare and then after about six months it'd be like yeah desensitized they're you know they're they're, they're just hanging out. bags of flesh yeah they're just out now yeah. part of this it's innate. It's this built-in human thing where men. There's all kinds of geolo or geology. There's all kinds of biology and, and all sorts of evidence to support this idea that men are attracted to female, the female form, for lots of reasons. One is very specific, which is a busty lady means uh, she can have. Wonder, can carry on the family line. Yeah, she can make kids and feed them, and, and they'll. I mean, it's, it's we're talking about evolutionary basic stuff here, right? So it isn't like we're all just turds naturally. We find it attractive for <laughs> well, a no, reason. We are turds naturally. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> but we find them attractive in That's a very. The point is, it is natural. Yeah, it's a natural thing. So I don't know that telling everybody they can sunbathe nude is going to change that that built-in attraction. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna, and that means some men who aren't going to be able to control themselves are going to be total creeps about it. And I don't know how you get around that. So I understand this. Like I'm all in on equal everything. In fact, I'm I've been accused of saying I, I think women are better at most things because <laughs> I think they're they're better in tune with their emotions and me, sure. and they understand stuff, and and I feel like they're more careful and they don't make as brash judgments as men. And I know this certainly, is a blanket statement. I understand. Certainly the women in our lives demonstrate that ability. Yeah, very much so. so like yeah. I would die without it. So right. um, for me, the, it's like, well, okay, I want you to have every single possible equality there is to have. But it doesn't change that there are a bunch of douchey guys who just are going to be like, boobs at the beach, boobs. I, like I said, I think it's you'll get you will have a, a transition period where it's a big deal, and then you'll get desensitized. We went to um, went to Australia in two thousand one, in October two thousand one, and um, went to Bondi Beach, which is uh, you know not just the inspiration for that color of of iMac way yeah. back in the day, Bondi Blue. Oh yeah, but is is a topless beach, and um, it's funny how I mean yeah there were there were women walking around. Uh, topless left and right and I guess I didn't mean to use the term left and right but walking around <laughs> topless and uh, you could tell who you could who have said left were. left, right and center and I would have thought you went to Mars on vacation but anyway <laughs> go ahead you're going to wish you had three hands um, <laughs> but you could tell who the tourists were because even even guys who I'd look at and say oh yeah that guy's douche he's wearing the the, uh, the banana hammock and uh, um you know, just kind of this this attitude you can kind of see. Not even not even looking around, like checking anything out. I mean, he's just sitting there, mm -hmm. reading a magazine or or uh, doing whatever, and and not looking at what's going on. So I think they've been around it for so much so much time that they've been desensitized. Whereas you look at the tourists, and Tristan and I were actually having more fun looking at the. Well, at least I thought <laughs> I was having more fun looking at the tourists right. than at uh, <laughs> sure. the topless women walking around. Yeah. But they were all like. Uh, you know, you just watch their eyes and they're not even being subtle about it, just following, you know, walking down the beach. Yeah, they can't help it. It's at least initially. Maybe they get used to it. But and listen, yeah. I know that like <laughs> so far, three of the topics we've talked about today, except for the Minecraft one, uh -huh. are probably going to have people either going, yeah, Scott and uh, Brian are right or going, those guys are ignorant. They don't understand the the gender, this and that and politics. But sure, just sure. calm down, everybody. I'm literally working off like a sandwich I ate two days ago. So just relax. Everything's fine. <laughs> I've got no excuse. Yeah. Brian, I've on had, the other hand. I've had plenty of protein. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I need some. Um, speaking of protein, a woman who opened fire at McDonald's over a baconless burger. She's been sentenced. I think we brought okay. her up before. Michigan woman has been sentenced to three to seven years in prison for opening fire at a McDonald's restaurant after workers twice failed to put bacon on her burger. Well, twice. Okay. At first, I thought that she was overreacting. Yeah. But now that you said it's twice. Fool me once, shame on me. <laughs> Fool me twice, shoot <laughs> everybody up. It twice. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Shoot everyone in sight. Uh, authorities say 30-year-old Shenanka Torres became angry in February of 2014 when the burger she ordered at the <laughs> restaurant's drive-up station was missing bacon. That's pronounced Shanika. Shanika, is it? What'd I yeah. say? Shenanka. Shenanka. There's no other end in there is what you're telling me. <laughs> she was offered a free meal, but bacon wasn't added to the second burger. Uh, police say she fired a shot through the restaurant. No one was injured. 
Kent County Courthouse convicted her March 25th. Judge Paul Sullivan on Tuesday sentenced her to one to five years for shooting at a building, plus two years for possessing a firearm during a felony. Torres says she is sorry, but it's over and done with. Wow. Okay. No, it's not. You're going it's to dismissive. prison. Yeah, exactly. It's it's uh, in five years it'll be over and done with. Yeah. So uh, or one to five years. Yeah. So okay, well that's kind of crazy though. So she complained that she didn't have bacon on her burger, so they gave her a free meal. Yep. But they didn't put bacon on the replacement. Yep. <laughs> yep. Grounds for shooting you. It's I wouldn't say this grounds for shooting, but holy cow, if you're gonna make a mistake on uh, on the replacement meal. Don't make it the same mistake that caused you to have to give the replacement meal away for free. Ah, uh, well, see? Uh, yeah. Michigan. Whole thing's a mess. Yeah, what's going on, Michigan? You know. Michigan? Uh, well, enough of Michigan, woman. Today's episode brought to you by Braintree. This is code for easy online payments. If you're building a mobile app, for example, and searching for simple payment solutions, check out Braintree at Braintree.com. Uh, their SDK, or Software Development Kit, look, I know what that is. Mm -hmm. Makes it easy to offer mobile payments, multiple payment types. Start accepting PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo. I never even heard of Venmo. Credit cards and more, all with a single integration. It's pretty rad. Uh, with Braintree version, uh, let's see, is it dot six zero? No, dot zero, V dot zero. Anyway. Version zero. Yeah, it's a weird name for their thing, but it's cool. Uh, one small snippet of code and you're all set up in less than 10 minutes to learn more. And your first $50,000 in transaction is fee-free. So let's say you're making a sweet game on, I don't know, whatever, iOS or Android. And that game's free to play, but it has some microtransaction stuff. Your first $50,000 in transactions, no fees at all. Go to BraintreePayments.com slash MorningStream and check it out. Simple, secure payments, easy to integrate, piece of cake. Again, first 50K in transactions absolutely free of fees. Go to braintreepayments.org or dot com slash morning stream. We thank them for their support of the show. We're going to take a break when we come back. Major spoilers time with uh, Steven. He'll be here. We'll talk about his post tornado life, which didn't actually happen, but we'll talk about that. It's a long story. Uh, and V will be here for some video game talk. That'll be fun. Uh, before all that, Brian brought music, and I have no idea what it is. So let's play some. Sure. This one's going out to Mike Jones, who says, Hi, Bach and Stefan. I'm rolling another digit <clears throat> in my age counter. It's 57. And have a simple wish for a bit of music from the talented Lindsey Sterling. I don't exactly know what a cover is from her, so I leave that to you. Ich habe TMS Vernugen. Wow. Vergnugen. <laughs> Far Vergnugen. I'm sure it's Vergnugen. Vergnugen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a cover by Lindsay Sterling, and we've played a little bit of her before. We played the uh, Game of Thrones theme, the Star Wars theme, and a uh, cover of Radioactive that she did with um, Pentatonix, I believe. How about another collaboration that she's done with another artist we've played here on the show a few times? The Piano Guys. Remember the Piano Guys and that cover of Coldplay's uh, Peponi that they uh, oh, yeah. Peponi, Paradise? Peponi. That they yeah. <laughs> the one up in, they filmed up in Utah, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? Well, uh, Moab. I think we could meet up for sushi where they filmed that. I think. Perfect. Let's mm -hmm. do that. Uh, they've done another TV theme cover. This is uh, Lindsey Sterling and the Piano Guys doing their cover of the theme from Mission Impossible. You'll also notice maybe a little bit of uh, Mozart hidden in this thing. Ooh. So uh, keep an ear out for that. Here's Mission Impossible by the Piano Guys featuring Lindsey Sterling.
Heard any good uh, microwave popcorns lately? Now this one says, it's normal for one to three tablespoons of kernels to remain unpopped. And this one is only recommended for certain wattage microwaves. Now this one is Pop Secret from Betty Crocker. Pop Secret works in all microwaves and it pops up beautifully, light and fluffy. The next time you want to curl up with a good microwave popcorn, make it Pop Secret. The secret to better microwave popcorn. Yeah. Up, down, up, down. This is the morning stream. Welcome back, everybody. We're back. That was Wendy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weird, right? Poor Wendy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she keeps making these sounds. <laughs> it's her own fault, man. Yeah, exactly. She's going to have to take it. Nobody to blame but herself. Yeah. All right. Steven time. Uh, he didn't have a, he didn't, for those worried about what I was saying, I can't find him. There he is. He didn't really have a tornado, but we'll talk about it. We'll get to that. Mm. You'll, you'll hear what happened. Something okay. happened. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program, Mr. Steven Schleicher. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Can, can we please talk about how I never win the lottery, Scott? <laughs> yeah. Are you, you're in a state that has lottery, right? So Yeah, yeah, but for some reason I never win it. For some reason it always goes around me. Yeah, what's going on with that? Very strange. So, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, so Friday, Scott was going to be a, a guest on, uh, on my show, Finally Friday. Yep. And, and we had nothing but technical difficulties. Yeah. And then as soon as we get started... Uh, my cell phone goes off because I've got an app that lets me be alerted of severe thunderstorm, uh, tornado warnings, all that stuff. Sure. And I said, oh, we got a severe thunderstorm warning. And then we started talking about tornadoes, and I'm like, eh, tornadoes go around us all the time. Yeah, I said, uh, <laughs> man, when's the last time you guys had a tornado? And you're like, oh, it's been forever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> 40 Famous minutes later. Words. Yeah. 40 minutes later, I'm like, oh, my uh, phone's going off again. Oh, this time it is a tornado warning. Yep. I got to get out of here. Yeah, so he literally, in mid-conversation, we had a caller on the line. We were talking about, I don't know, podcasting something, something. Yeah, yeah. And then Steven goes, guys, got to hang it up. I'm out of here. There's a tornado coming. And then, boop, that was it. Yep. Uh, turns out, though, you got missed barely, right? Kind of went oh, over. Oh, yeah. I mean, I posted a couple pictures. I think I sent you one. You could see the end of the funnel cloud still trying to form or something. Yeah. It was on the back half. It was about a mile north of us it, it missed us completely mm. uh by the time i got everybody downstairs and where they needed to be and everything uh turned it on and looked at the radar a little bit more in detail and i was like it was clear it was never going to hit our hit our city so, so again you, scott <laughs> always goes around <laughs> your chance listen your chances of winning the lottery were lost I know. The last time you won a good Hearthstone game, that was it. That's the last time. <laughs> oh, that was me beating my eight-year-old. Oh, week. right, right. Hey, and wait. rubbing it in his face. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. When you have a thing like that, do you guys have? Are you set up in the basement for like emergency stuff like that? Uh, like, yeah, we've got uh, we've got uh, emergency kit. We've got the uh, all you know the crank radio. We've got first aid, mm -hmm. and then we just bring some blankets down and we go into one of the bathrooms down here, which is uh, probably the most enclosed space. Sure. And we just uh, party with the kids, keep them calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way to do it. Done. So it's not of like course a, me. It's not of course like... me, I run outside and I'm like, let me get some pictures of it. Oh, right. of course you do. Yeah. Okay. Storm chaser Steven. <laughs> I used to do that when I was younger. You're like, uh, wow. you're the Bill Paxton of the story. And uh, yeah, there we you thank go. you for it. Well, Steven is here. There are no tornadoes this morning, so he can no, be on I... this show <laughs> like he does every Monday talking about the latest in pop culture, video, or not video games, freaking uh, uh, comic books, movies, all that kind of stuff. That's what happens at Majorspoilers.com. Age of Ultron is not even out in the States and has already made 200 million freaking dollars. I know. Can you believe that? I mean, wow. just over the weekend worldwide, $201.2 million made by uh, Age of Ultron. And that was just in the opening weekend. I don't know what countries it opened. I believe it was the UK. I don't know if it was China or not, but I, I know UK was one of the ones that opened up. Yeah. Several of our uh, Frog Pants listeners I yeah, yeah. Uh, got a chance to go see it. Patrick's been really rubbing it in out. for days, freaking Patrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah such a bummer. Yeah, the, the French got it before we did. Gosh, yeah. dang it. I hate that. Here's the thing. That. I was predicting several weeks ago, even before you guys did Movie Draft, I was like, this movie's going to hit $2 billion in the box office in its initial run. Wow. And, you know, uh, Furious 7 has already hit a billion worldwide, and it's still in its first run. Yeah. So I'm thinking Avengers, whoever got that on your movie draft this year, is going to be the uh, the top winner. I think that's all they got. 
Um, they, oh, really? no, they, they got two things. They got, uh, uh, let me pull that up here. It's those they guys. got Ultron and then they got some little cheap thing. Yeah, else it's, called, it's all they could afford because I want to say they paid eighty for Ultron? eighty for it. Yeah, or yeah. eighty or eighty-five. And I think, in in retrospect, maybe that was, if you you know, maybe that was a good buy. Mm -hmm. It is. It's just that the the, uh, the traditional movie draft thinking is that you need to have a good tent pole if you can get it, but then lots of little sleepers and you know ones that you don't think are any good but will still make a bunch of money. Like that Paul Blart movie is going to make money whether it's tanks as a as a critical problem or not. You, but know, you have to have it, a lot of those to equal what Avengers is going to be. Exactly. And there's yeah. no way. I, well, I time will tell. I still feel like we have so, a pretty good lineup, but this Avengers so was, thing may be it for them. Yeah, no kidding. Well, it was Amtrekker. And yeah. they they did also get uh, Insidious Chapter 3 and Spy, that uh, Melissa McCarthy thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. going to go crazy. It's going to blow up. Yeah, it's going to be huge. Watch for that. We got, hey, we got $25 million for uh, Unfriended so far. Hey, wait. That one is, I think that one's going to do really good in the box office. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll do fine. I, I worry that one's going to be a bigger cult hit after the fact. Because um, mm -hmm. the, the audience it speaks to is an internet savvy, we'll torrent anything we want to kind of audience. I'm not sure about that, but I have a feeling about that, so I'm a little worried about that on our side. But I feel good about um, Mad Max. Yeah. Uh, what's the other one we got that was kind of a big deal? We got um, oh, uh, Terminator Genesis. Oh, that that one I'm I'm so on the fence on. I mean, not not on whether it'll be good, but whether people will go see it. Uh, pixels. Yeah, you got your pixels Pitch there. Perfect. That, that one will make at least. That one will make at least sixty million. <laughs> oh, it'll do. Hopefully, it does. I'm hoping for a hundred for pixels. Yeah. It better oh, do no. that. Mm -mm. It better. You don't think so? <laughs> no. Damn it. Adam, Adam Sandler movies generally do about forty million dollars. Really? At the box office, generally. But he does them for like $20 million for the budgets. They're always money makers for him. Oh. So he just keeps cranking out these $20 million movies that make $40 million in the box office. Now, I think Pixels is a little bit, has a higher budget uh, than than before. But that's typically what he uh, he runs at. But that Jack and Jill movie he made in 2011. Made, made money. Made almost over $150 million. Yeah. So, this is, and this is the first Adam Sandler movie in a while that I'm saying, you know, I actually really want to see that. Which all oh, the pixels? Because the it's, pixels it's got the nostalgia because, factor, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So maybe that says something. I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to hope, right? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? It's been a while well, since uh, I've cared, but yeah. Avengers: Age of Ultron is going to open in 4,200 theaters. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns has the widest release at 4,404 uh, theaters. So that's uh, quite a quite a large opening. So it, here it is. Jack and Jill did 150 million world worldwide, um, but it never beat its How much own, in the U.S.? Uh, 74 million, which is not yeah. quite budget, which was 79 million. Yeah. But worldwide, you're right. So what matters is domestic here. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen, are you going to go to a midnight showing? I don't know yet because we're trying to coordinate with a bunch of people so we can get our uh, podcast review up as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. Looks like I'm going to be able to see it Saturday afternoon after one of my kids is done with soccer. So. Yeah, I don't think I'm... I don't think I can do it Friday, um, but I think Saturday's looking possible for me. It might yeah. have to be after my my Nvidia show that day, so it may oh, be I've Saturday. I've seen evening. it like six times by Saturday. Oh, Jeez, guys, oh. bastard! <laughs> and plus, plus we've got a kind of a stupid movie theater here, so I have to double check and make sure they're even going to have a midnight show if they do that, because otherwise it will have to be Saturday afternoon. Wow. Uh, Stephen, what do you think of Jared Leto, Leto, whatever how you say it, as the Joker? That that made the internet fart, didn't it? Oh yeah, it did. <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing: uh, we haven't seen the Joker with his his clothes off that often in anything, <laughs> right? So how do we know he doesn't have all this uh, right. uh, artwork done all over his body? Yeah, I've always and the thought second of thing, him. If you've been punched in the face by Batman as many times as you had, you're going to need some new grill work. Yeah. Right. I, I feel like, and Brian and I haven't had a chance to talk about this because we missed Thursday, which, by the way, I'll explain why PM didn't happen. It's I haven't said that yet. I meant to earlier. But anyway, we've talked about it a little bit off air. I'm, I'm sticking to my guns on this. I feel like I don't... The internet has the memory of a flea. Yeah. Because it was literally 2007, which feels like yesterday, mm -hmm. when they were all saying, Heath Ledger is the Joker. Give me a break. This is no Jack Nicholson. What are you guys doing? This is a terrible idea. This is awful. What's this photo with his mangled face? What a what a terrible move, uh, freaking Nolan. We don't trust you anymore. And then now, everyone loved Heath Ledger as the Joker. They mm -hmm. thought it was amazing because they actually let it come out and see the damn thing before making a, jam, a freaking judgment. Yeah. And now they're doing the exact same thing. Ugh, Leto, this is insane. What's the good Charlotte freaking vibe? Well, how, how, yeah. This is no, this he's no Heath Ledger. 
Do they mm-hmm. uh, seriously? They have the memories of fleas. Right. 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 We do this yeah. every time, and why not let this thing come out and see what it's going to be? First of all, he's not in a Batman movie. That's number no. one. Yep. This is a different kind of thing, and I keep calling it a Sinister Six. I don't mean to call it that. What's it called? <laughs> Suicide Squad. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. <laughs> it's an SS. Different company. I keep doing that. Um, it's a totally different vibe, different thing entirely. He's mm-hmm. meant to be younger. He's meant to be a little bit more spry. That whole that comic book or the the books that deal with that stuff are not the same. It isn't yeah. old man Joker in his full purple suit sitting in a chair laughing like Mark Hamill. That's not well, how it works. Here's the thing. I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, the Warner Brother DC animated movie. Um, Attack on Arkham, no. which is essentially it's a Suicide Squad movie where the Suicide Squad is tasked to break into Arkham to essentially, well, I don't want to spoil it, but to do something. And while they're there, the Joker is there, breaks out and causes mayhem. Yeah, It wouldn't surprise me if they're using that animated movie as the basis for mm-hmm. this live action movie, because all the same, almost all the same characters are in the animated movie as in the live action movie. And um, I could see uh, Leto doing a Cape Fear Robert De Niro thing where we see him pumping iron in his cell. Mm -hmm. And then when he breaks out, he's got a suit on and the cats are not that big of a deal. Totally. But even then, if they don't, let's say he's shirtless the whole time with one one green glove and a purple glove and a stupid hair and all that and yelling and the bad teeth and the whatnot and the tattoos. Fine. Show me something different. I, I, I don't have any problem. I want my jokers. Like I said on Twitter, I prefer my jokers half full. In other words, <laughs> I'm not looking. You don't have to be so damn negative out of the gate. And besides, that character should never be somebody else's interpretation of the previous guy's work. Right. right. It's right. meant for new interpretation. So it's actually a great opportunity to, to flesh that thing out and do something different. And Leto is a great actor. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's, he's kind of a psycho and weird and kind of one of those guys you want to see in this role. So... I don't know why everybody's freaking out. I think it's brilliant. I, I think mm-hmm. if there is going to be any backlash, it's over the tattoo over his forehead. Um, you know, people who have to deal with people who have uh, mental disabilities and, and those kinds of things are probably going to take that as a uh, major insult more so than the rest of the tattoos on yeah, his body. The bigger complaint I've heard is that it's too on the nose. Like the tattoos are have the little phrases the tattoos mm-hmm. are are just too like. Yeah, Joker's crazy. Look out for the crazy Joker, which I can kind of see. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing. Those tattoos aren't subtle. Mm-hmm. They're basically what is it unhinged on the on his head or what is it up there? Damn it, damaged. damaged. It's like oh okay, well he's damaged. <laughs> you know, like it, it should be something weird. Like I don't know, I love Batman or something stupid. Yeah. Or, you know, like they could play around with that some more. But I understand there's going to be somebody somewhere is always going to not like some things. But the utter outrage on Twitter was really hard to bear. And and here's the only other thing. This is the first kind of quote unquote official shot we've seen. We've got, what, uh, another year before this hits the theaters. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's going to be some changes. And if you've been online and looked around, you've seen a lot of blurry shots. There's at least one blurry shot taken on set from the uh, director's um, uh, video village thing where it looks like he's wearing the white suit uh, that we've seen him wear in, like, uh, The Dark Knight Returns type stuff. So, you know, I, I have a feeling that... Uh, people are really blowing this out of proportion a lot more than what it is. And even if we see only 10% of this uh, come out in the movie, then that's fine too. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Totally fine with it. And I have an action figure of that Joker, by the way, that's uh, Mm -hmm. uh, in the white suit. I want to say it's a Mm -hmm. McFarlane thing. Beautiful. Yeah. Really cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, All right. So that's happening. Oh, speaking of Frank Miller, though, Mm -hmm. he's coming back doing a Dark Knight series finale. I guess this makes it a trilogy in a weird way. And um, some people are, concerned that he has gone slightly politically nuts in the last couple of years and they're worried that he's going to put a lot of that in here much like he did with his previous work with um uh, what was that dynamite title called um, oh i don't even remember remember crap he took a lot of heat for it anyway it was a, it was a character that just basically killed terrorists all day yeah yeah, yeah. and there was a lot of sort of very heavy-handed well, politicking going in there but maybe this uh, gives us a little hint on which way he's going it's called dk3 the Master Race. Oh, oh, hey! So, right. I don't know if this, I, you know, there's a, there's the classic uh, Kyle Batman. Batman. <laughs> there's a classic Batman on a wire kind of pose that we've seen from the original Dark Knight and DK2 series, yeah. and um, but this one has a bloody Superman logo in the background. Yeah. So I don't know if this is somehow related to um, Batman seeing Superman as uh, as part of this quote unquote Master Race, uh, the Superman. Or if uh, this is just a, a way for DC to try to rank in some bucks with Frank Miller to tie it into the upcoming movie. I don't know. I feel we'll like find out this fall. I feel like that movie has something to do with it. I mean, at the very least, if you're going to put if you're going to have a, a new Batman book from the guy who arguably changed the way comics are written, 
in 1986, uh, forever, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, you really could lay that at his feet and say, thank you, Frank Miller. Also, thanks a lot for Robocop 2, that piece of garbage. Anyway. <laughs> uh, City yeah, exactly. But you could... You could argue that that's just this. Oh, great! The 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 coming back of the great O'Tour to finish up this incredible thing or whatever. Or you could be cynical and say, "Huh, there's a Superman angle, and you're coming in right now, and you're releasing it right before the movie. Mm, interesting." Yeah, um, I I did not think that DK two was that great. Mm. Um, uh, certainly, The Dark Knight Returns is is really a a masterful work on a number of different levels, depending on how you see it. Uh, so much iconography has come out of that uh, book um, that it it really is great. But you're right, Scott. There's, uh, you know, let's not forget uh, the spirit that he directed. And let's not forget a bunch of other uh, comics that have not done as well. But then he also has uh, the Daredevil series, which is, has been spectacular way back in the day. So, yeah, yeah, that was a great Daredevil. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, everybody has their hits and misses. Um, I'm mildly interested to see where this goes. But I'm not jumping up and down about it. Yeah. If two would have been more of a seminal work, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But since it wasn't. Yeah. What was that called? Dark Knight Strikes Again? I think it's Strikes Again, something like that. Yeah. That's a weird name. Yeah. Or but, Dark Knight Strikes. Uh, criticisms. Let's see. Was it, well, i got to remember the name of this. This comic. Sin City Onwards, he is referred to as homophobic and misogynistic. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, disabled something something. Hate speech against disabled people. He hates Iranians. <laughs> Boy, his uh, Wikipedia page has a big section on criticism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yowza. Um, but there he is in RoboCop too, so good for him. All right. Yeah. Uh, anything else going on over there? Before oh, we go, can we yeah. talk really quickly about the Nightcrawler image that was leaked this morning? Oh, yeah, I saw that just briefly. Uh, if you follow um, what's-his-name's uh, uh, Instagram and Twitter, he posted it, but then he had to repost it because the first image didn't come out quite right. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I mm. really like it. I think it looks yeah. more like the 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 comics Nightcrawler than Alan mm -hmm. Cumming did. And I, and I thought Alan Cumming was great. I thought he was a... He was a, a perfectly capable nightcrawler, but this boy, I mean, you look at this and it's like it feels like it's right out of the comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. Color scheme, hair, ears, all of that stuff. Is this yep. up on major spoilers, by the way? I can't find no, it. No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. I'm looking. No, because uh, I haven't been able to track down the best uh, version of it yet. So, first look, see Cody Smith McPhee. Oh, here we mm -hmm. go. He was great on American Idol, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, he looks great. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, great. I'm in. I'm on that. I'm in that. I think yeah. it's going to be a fun movie. I, I know a I lot of so people too. are already kind of poo-pooing it, but it's a. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a good movie. They That's can poo-poo it all they uh, want. They're Jean Grey. It's going to be great. They're all mm -hmm. going to go. They can complain all they want. They're <laughs> right. all full of shit. Every single one of them. Here's where my lack of food is coming out. They need to go. They're going to all go see this movie, and they may even complain after. But you're still going. Yeah. Because right. it's X Men, you jackasses. It's the only X-Men we're going to get, so go. Go I'm see it. boycott until the next X-Men movie comes out because it's going to be better. Uh, we had a very interesting discussion a couple of weeks. Maybe it was last week, yeah, on the Major Spoilers podcast about supporting your favorite things. Do you, if you sit there and you say, I'm going to boycott this and not see it, and if everybody did it, on the one hand, you could signal to the studios that, hey, this is not the stuff you want to see, or it could send a different signal to the theaters or the uh, studios because they never get anything right of, oh, hey, we don't have to make any more of these movies because no one wants to see them anymore. So yeah. it's that really weird uh, path that you have to kind of tread lightly on stuff. But I, I, I think certainly the, the dollar is a way to show that you don't uh, appreciate that. Sure, sure. I, I feel like um, as long as you get the Banff, I really like the Peter, <laughs> the, the uh, coming, uh, what's yeah, his yeah. name? What was his name? Not Peter Cumming. What's his name? Alan Cummings, Alan Cummings uh, Banff effects where he would pop mm -hmm. around and make mm -hmm. that sound and that yeah. cool smoky purple smoke stuff was great. Yeah. The smoke would kind of get sucked into itself. Yeah, really so, cool. So you don't need to change that. How do I know this kid? How do I know S Cody Smith McPhee? What's he in? That's where have you seen him before? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? No. Maybe. No. Yeah, yeah. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Maybe. That's where he's from. Oh, here we go. I like that. He's in the Let Me In remake. Uh, the one that was Let the Right One In or something. It's the one, the vampire with the with the with the girl. Uh, what else? Hold on. Good oh, voice, the road. Uh, voice work for paranormal. He's the kid in the road. Oh, he's the kid in the road. That's it. <laughs> Get that kid out of the road. That kid's at... <laughs> him and Aragorn doing their yeah. thing. No, he was great in that movie. That kid. Okay, I'm all in on that kid. Cool. That's great. The road. Boy, not a lot of other things that uh, 
Yeah, Let Me In, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, He's Young Norman, The Road. He's super young, so yeah, he'll. Uh, well, that's what they're looking for right now. I'm going to yeah. bet before the end of the week we will find out who the new Spider Man is. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, really? That's yes. soon. Uh huh. There was a list of five, and then there was a guy who came out. I'm not going to, I don't have his name in front of me, but he was tweeting out multiple times. He's saying, Hey, I'm not saying that I am Spider Man, but if I was, then I would expect the announcement. Oh, uh, really? So I'll yeah. say this about Cody Smith McPhee. He'd make a fine Peter Parker as well. They're not going to well, do they that. Won't, they won't do that. They won't, but he would. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boy, a really young Peter Parker, yeah. though, for sure. But yeah. yeah. They're going to reboot it. If they if they make me watch one more person get bit by a spider, I'm going to shit a it's brick. It's not going to. They said that that won't happen. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That won't happen, at least on the Marvel side. That's not I have happen. to watch one more person get bitten by a spider. <laughs> Steven, what is happening else in your world that you'd like to mention before we go? Free comic book day yeah. this weekend, uh, Saturday. Go to your local comic book store. Check them out. Support your local uh, comic book shop. And uh, they'll be giving away free comics this week. I think I've got a whole stack of them here. They sent me the, all of them mm. uh, this year. Mm. It's a big, heavy box of free comics that you can get. And I uh, uh, encourage you to go check that out, not only for the free comics, but maybe pick up some other comics, too, and support your local comic shop. And uh, if you want to see some cool art, be sure to uh, head over to, what is it, uh, frogpants.com slash store. Yeah. And uh, sign up for some free art from uh, Taylor and Scott. Yeah, or Carter and Scott. Carter yes. and Scott, sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's easy to get my kids mixed up. I I, uh, I put a video up. I just took it in the chat room. There's a video up talking about it. We start sign-ups on the second. You get to do them for 24 hours. They're absolutely for free. They're all signed, hand-signed, as you can see by the video. And uh, we're shipping them everywhere, anywhere in the world. Get free comics on Free Comic Book Day. And we'll have a code that day that saves you a ton of money on regular store stuff if you've been waiting around all year to get uh, a good deal. So, uh, yeah be a part of it we did it last year yep. it was great it was a ton of work but we were happy to do it. it's a great way to yep. show appreciation to the community and uh, i appreciate you bringing that up major spoilers on twitter major spoilers.com steven stay out of trouble i will try and tornadoes Bye. okay <laughs> no tornado for you stay out of the path all right veronica 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 i think that's how you say it right yeah, that is that is correct. That is the correct uh, spelling or pronunciation. Monica. Oh, now that see that song put it together though. They they didn't spread it out oh, the way they we did the it. The space in between. Yeah, yeah weird. Uh, speaking of the space in between, between us and San Francisco, it's Veronica <laughs> Belmont. Hi. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't I'm at in all. San Francisco. It, it makes none. Oh, where are you? It now? doesn't make. Huh? Are you at home? I'm home. Your yeah. mic. Your mic sounds great. Oh, hold on. Can you can you I send video to you? Oh, I don't know. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Is this your new setup? Yeah. I don't have any makeup on. Sorry, guys. Oh, hey. But, I'm um, horrified. I can't believe oh, it. Veronica with no new, makeup on. This is my new mic. I'm Tom Merritt now. Yeah. Look. Don't let uh, Jeremy Renner and Chris Evans see this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's a, Everyone's got PR40s now. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's my new setup, and this is my new my new office space. Um, Beautiful. You can see I, I haven't set everything up yet. I'm gonna get some like art over here on the door, and yeah. I got my little sword and laser guy over there, which I guess you can't see. I'm using a new a different camera as well, so it's not as. I got the uh, Logitech the C920. Uh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to have the 910, and something it doesn't look as good. I don't I, know. I agree. Why I have the 910, and I need to upgrade. So looking at your video, I now think maybe I've got the wrong camera. So well, no, I have the 920. That's a 920, but the 910 always looks better. To oh, you me. think the 910 looks better? Yeah. Hmm, I can't yeah. figure it out. But anyway, I'm not right. lit properly. Well, in the you look backlit. you look great, and I wouldn't oh, have, thanks. wouldn't have known you weren't wearing makeup. Uh, <laughs> but I do know I did recognize that PR forty, and it feels it feels nice that everybody I know now uses a PR forty. So did you weird. say you noticed that it sounded better? Yeah, right it does away? sound great. Wow. Yeah, deep good. and Sounds deep really and good, soulful. Yeah, yeah. it's like that it. Heil sound that yeah. we come to. No one loves. Come to love. Yeah. Good. It was all worth it then. <laughs> well, thanks, Sword and Laser. Thanks, Sword and Laser. Uh, speaking of lasers and swords, sometimes those are in video games. Veronica comes on the show, talks about things that are happening in the world of video games, news and whatnot. Uh, what's going on this week? Well, you guys were just talking about uh, comic books and mm-hmm. Marvel and all sorts of stuff, and there was a big announcement this uh, past week about uh, Marvel and Telltale Games oh, yeah. uh, teaming up for a new project coming up in 2017. So we still got a little ways out on this one. Mm. Um, but yeah, they, they made the announcement last week at an event here in San Francisco. And so people are trying to speculate on what this could be, like what, what Marvel property is this going to be around? 
And do you have any ideas? What would you want to see in a Telltale game? I mean, they've see, done so well with other projects in the past. Yeah. yeah, and with the with the the way the Walking Dead Telltale games were set up, having it be this narrative that you have this this little bit of control in, but you get this story, that might be the way they can do something that they haven't done before with a Marvel game. Because we've had the fighting game, we've had the um, uh, the side scrolling platformer. We've had, we've had know, every the, the genre really strategy. Exactly. Sure. We haven't had our MMO cause that got canceled. Yeah. They canned <laughs> that. Ago. Although that the action RPG is pretty good. Marvel. What is it? Marvel heroes, heroes. Alliance or whatever it is. No, just Marvel heroes. It Marvel heroes. It's really yeah. good. Really fantastic mm -hmm. game, but not the MMO we were promised. But so yeah, they've right. been in all these genres, mostly action oriented has been my experience. It would be fun to see something more narrative driven. Yeah, story, story oriented. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to choose your own adventure style. I don't know. It, there's so many possibilities, and I have you've a got prediction. So much time. Here's my prediction. I don't think it will be mainline stuff. It will be based on the Defender stuff they're going to be doing on Netflix. I think it'll oh, be because wow. because they lean dark over at Telltale. Not lean dark, sure. but they they tend to do really well with you know they've done great with Walking Dead and the Game of Thrones series is quite good. I loved their um, what was the the one based on fables, I forgot already. Wolf something, whatever it is. Oh, the Wolf Among Us. That's the one. Oh, right. Fantastic. Maybe my favorite, actually. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I can't remember the name though. Um, and this is a chance for them to to do something that that is in their wheelhouse still. So you know the the kind of writing and the kind of darker tone they take. If that Daredevil show is any indication, that's a perfect place for that. So do a Defender show where you know you've got Luke Cage and Daredevil and. And freaking uh, what's her name Jones and all those people working together. Right. That's that would be an amazing kind of multi arc thing. Fist. Sure, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. yeah. So that's my thinking. I could be totally wrong, but it seems like they're not going to do a mainline like here's something to go along with Avengers Part Three, <laughs> One and Two. Here's <laughs> Captain America hitting Ultron again yeah. for the umpteenth time. Plus these Telltale games, assuming that they go with a similar format, they're not about precision controls and you know. Right. hitting A at the right well it is about hitting A at the right time but it's more about these like not quick time events but kind of puzzly reaction-y kind of things it, that doesn't seem to be an Avengers kind of thing it seems like more of a, a story thing where you know Matt Murdock has to get the truth out of some scumbag and uh, I'm all in on that so whatever it is I'm sure it'll be great though but boy, their star has been rising for years it's cool to see that that, that adventure style game still thriving in the hands of at least one company I know yeah. so many, so many great uh, properties that they've teamed up with. Um, it's I, I feel like it can only be a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but didn't they have a deal with? Didn't they do something with DC also? Mm, not that I know of. I know they did. Um, what am I thinking of? Oh, uh, yeah, they did the Borderlands. Oh, I guess the, someone on Destructoid said Wolf Among Us is DC Comics. Oh, F Fables, I guess it is. Yeah, so yeah. I guess it is DC. So, yeah. Technically, I guess they kind of did. It must not be an exclusive kind of thing. But True. That's good for them because they can, you know, open it up and, and work with different different companies. Yeah. Uh, what about Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, Would you be, be interested in that? That'd be all right. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, yeah. again, it's in a lighter. I do like. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Ryan. Uh, I do like that they would, t you know, that if they did follow either of these routes, that it would be something that is not a mainstream Marvel mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. You know, the Defenders would be great, or a um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, or you know, one of these other outside things that's not Spider Man, X Men, or Avengers. Yeah. How about. Well, uh, it's interesting, too, though, because they, they, they work with big properties like, like with uh, Walking Dead and Game of Thrones, and yet they kind of take those stories, you know, off the beaten path. Like they tell different stories within those worlds. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's something there. Like maybe it could be one of their bigger, more mainstream properties, but then we're getting a different point of view or different perspective from yeah. different characters. In that case, I'm I'm totally with you. Like if they could if they take us in places that those those current properties aren't already doing, you know, in a lot of ways like the Lego games, which I know is for a very different audience, but the Lego games just kind of extend the same moviegoer fiction. Mm -hmm. Um and that's usually what you get from this stuff. The nice thing about the Arkham series from DC and and Warner Brothers has been that that uh those Arkham games take Batman in places we haven't messed with. Uh, or see another mainline stuff. It's not tied to a movie release. Like they're kind of standalone properties. And anytime that happens, I get excited because it means there are less suits involved with trying to make some sort of marketing thing happen. Mm -hmm. And there are more people involved that are interested in telling good stories, making a good execution, and and having good sales. I mean, everybody wants that. But uh, you know, if they the the, the real the, the reason I think they'll go obscure is only based on the only other time they've worked with comics has been fables which is where they went with something that seemed totally different and off the beaten path. That is none of the mainline DC stuff at all. 
Hmm. Uh, and it just makes me think that that's where they would go. They were going Fables here. had a pretty intense audience, though. I feel like Fables has a very passionate you know, group of, of fans behind it, too. Sure. And it's very adult, too, which is mm-hmm. not to say they can't do something not as adult. But if you take Avengers or Spider-Man or whatever, there's only so far you can go with that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Daredevil, you can get pretty gritty. At least it, at least it now appears you can be as gritty as you want to be after seeing that show. Uh, so I don't know. It's, it's yeah. exciting either way. And whatever. It's a genre I'd like to see exist and not go away. There was a time there where I thought we'd never play adventure games again. And that completely turned around. And some would argue that Telltale's the reason. Yay, Telltale. Good job, guys. Awesome, way to awesome go. company. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, what else is going on, V? I mean, there's something happening at Sword and Laser right now. You guys are doing a contest or something. Yeah, so a couple things. Yeah, we're doing a contest over uh, with Ink Shares. Uh, so people are submitting their own stories, uh, their own books, really. And we're doing a contest where uh, we're going to look at the top five, and uh, all those are going to get uh, mentorship with Gary Witta and with us. And and our top pick is going to get an interview on the show. All sorts of great stuff. But I think more importantly, we should talk about which is much more timely is the the DTNS uh, milestone goal that oh, we're yeah. going to we're doing the supercast tomorrow on DTNS and we are less than a thousand dollars away from getting me and Scott on the show weekly yep. um, as regular guests regular contributors um, so we are stoked on that so I think that's going to be tomorrow at th- at three p.m. Pacific time correct four p.m. And- Mountain and uh, it's me and it's you and it's all the other contributors Patrick and uh, uh, Roger and freaking Justin, Justin. Robert Young yep yep, yep. so uh, it's going to be really fun that'll be live of course we're all going to be loosely tossing some uh, topics around and it yeah, will give I'm you a good be taste about Apple Watch ooh yay Apple ooh. Watch all right oh, give me you rocking the Apple Watch got, some, got me some Apple Watch give me your, like your, yeah what do you I think will, you will have to stay tuned <laughs> to DTNS <laughs> tomorrow Look to get the full tease. report. That's a great tease. I like I it. Meant the, I meant the, uh, the the thing you said was the tease, uh, not not you, not implying you. Yeah. I'm, I'm implying such a the, tease. Such a tease. I know. Uh, you went with That's the white band, Anderson. I noticed. Is that a white? Yeah, I went with white sport. That looks pretty good. That's why you have yours now, <laughs> not in May. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Brian, you don't have yours out, I take it? No, no. But all of the 42 millimeter black uh, sport watches are like, well, unless you unless you were like right at the beginning, that was the most popular. 80% or something of, of watch buyers bought that one. So mm-hmm. getting those in May. Well, I'm still waiting for one of my friends to tell me I have I have to get it. And no Corinne one's bought one and she's got hers. And uh, No one's told me yet to, that I must get it. No, I don't think it's a must buy. Yet. Tune in tomorrow to find out if Tom and Veronica can convince me that I need an <laughs> Apple Watch at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Veronica it on would, it Twitter. Would make you cooler. Yeah, it would be cooler, right? Yeah. Uh, v, thanks, man, for hanging out. Yeah. And I love Talk the new studio. Soon. Have a good time. We'll see you. Bye now. Bye. She waved like the queen. Oh. Brian, oh, it's happening. Okay, we're good. I don't know. Help. My screen was freaking out. Uh, let's do Help. some quick emails. They're brought to you by. Dave's Daredevil podcast. Join J. David Weeder or Wetter in a weekly podcast dedicated to reading Daredevil comics, enjoying Daredevil comics, and discussing Daredevil, you guessed it, comics. Uh, comics covered range from Daredevil's early days under the pen of Stan Lee all the way up, uh, uh, bleh, all the way up to current <laughs> Daredevil comics. Yeah. New episodes of Dave's Daredevil podcast are released every Sunday at daredevilpodcast.com. Justice may be blind, but it can see in the dark. Indeed. Did you have you seen the entire series yet? Not yet. We're uh, just finished uh, episode seven, I think. So we still have five more. Mm, I have two left, is all. So I'm almost there as well. Yeah. Loving it though, man. So it's- freaking good. Is. We uh we have a new name for Wilson Fisk. Do you want to know the name? This won't spoil anything. <laughs> okay, what is it? He is now known as Strategic Car Based Head Removal Services Manager. <laughs> That's that uh, gets uh, covered early on in yeah. the series, like episode three. So I like that. Yeah, yes. he's great. He, uh, boy, is that is Vincent D'Onofrio? Like when you look at his face and like especially his profile, yeah, it is dead on to Kirby's baby-faced kingpin yeah it's the kingpin it they, really they, is. they cast him so perfectly he embodies it in ways i didn't expect they've humanized him in ways i didn't expect yeah um they are taking that series in places that i'm not even sure the source material even deserves it's fantastic right. wonderful if this is what marvel wants to do on tv like streaming stuff i am so in on this man we are in love with it it's so good yeah uh, all right. Way to go, Private Butterball. Good job, guys. Although, guy that plays uh, the, the Daredevil there, Matt Murdock, he's mm-hmm. the uh, British, Charlie Cox. Yeah, Br- British actor or Scottish actor. Yep. His accent comes out when he's in the rain. Oh, 
<laughs> really? Yeah. He kind of washes the English off of him. Something happens when he's in the rain. I don't know if he's cold or something, but his his he's got all kinds of accent coming out. It's really and, weird. Uh, he's officially signed with um uh, with Marvel Films, so uh, we may see him in the Civil War film. Holy shite! Yeah. Really? Yep. <gasps> Dude. Yeah. Don't load you. load that film up with as many of these heroes as you can. Yeah, man. I'm all for it. Go for it. Oh, like, oh my gosh, you just freaked me out with that. That's amazing. That's great news. Uh, <laughs> hello, Schuster and Bendis, says uh, Todd W. It's a comic reference right there. Nice. Yeah, it could be. It says, I just watched the first episode of Superheroes and Never Ending Battle, thanks to the awesome recommendation on the show yesterday. I loved it. However, and it is good. Everybody should watch it. However, I did want to point out one thing. Leif Schreiber says that he, quote, was mesmerized by the fantastic adventures of caped crusaders, men of steel, and their evil adversaries. Notice that evil adversaries part. He said that, or, oh, sorry, he then said he was able to play one of those characters, not heroes. I know this is me nitpicking at Scott's nitpicking, but there you have it. Pow and wham, though, Todd W. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'd made this comment that he had he had said, I, it, whatever, it was vague. It sounded like he was saying he played one of the heroes, and he hadn't. And I was oh, saying, gotcha. I see what you're saying. Like he when he's talking about guy. playing uh, Sabretooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, okay. you know, I nitpicked. But it's a great, it's a great documentary, worth every freaking minute you spend in there. People should watch it. You too, Brian. You should watch it. I can't wait. It's it's on my list. I was gonna do it for this week, and um, since we're doing uh, documentaries for recommendals, but I have a different one that I want to watch. Oh, all right. Plus, we've already recommended that one, so it would be kind of a useless re-recommendal. I'll watch one tonight. How how about Jupiter ascending? Asked this caller. Hey there, Scott and Brian. It's uh, Ian. I am Sci-Fi in the Tadpoles for the morning stream. I was listening to a Tuesday's episode, and uh, you mentioned how there really aren't any movies out these days that are cult classics, like Rocky Horror Picture Show. And according to uh, my friends, and after seeing it, I might agree with them, Jupiter Ascending might actually wind up being one of those cult classics. Okay. Brian, hmm. I've not seen it. I haven't either. Because it got panned and no one liked it. Um, yeah, it was Wachowski thing, right? Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to just real quick get the Rotten Tomatoes on it because I don't remember. Uh, okay. What was the movie called? Jupiter, Jupiter Ascending. Jupiter Ascending. Here we go. i got to make sure this is on my Netflix list because I, I did want to see it. I just didn't want to, you know, see it... Uh, Twenty five percent. It's not great. Wow. But his thinking is is interesting because you never know what a cult classic is going to be until it kind of becomes one. Yeah, exactly. Um, you can't make a cult classic, right? And so I don't know if this one's got the the ability to do that or any any more than I think any of their movies might. Also, Rotten Tomatoes, your page, your CSS is all jacked up. What is going on here? <laughs> Can I tell you? It's funny when you go to Netflix and say, "Hey, add Jupiter Ascending to my." DVD queue as soon as it becomes available because it's not really it hasn't been released on uh, uh, to Netflix yet. Mm -hmm. um, other ones it says more like Jupiter Ascending, 2010, The Year We Make Contact, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, Altered States, Conan the Barbarian, and Flash Gordon. Oh wow! So it's this might be this might have to be a net or a, a film sack. Thing. Maybe maybe we maybe that's one of our new ones we do next year or sometime yeah. soon when it comes out. Um, mm -hmm. Be, be all right with that. You remember I sent you the trailer, thanks to uh, Gnomewise, I sent you the trailer to Rock and Rule, which is an animated um, animated uh, sci-fi rock and roll movie from the 80s with Iggy Pop and uh, Debbie Harry. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I sent that over to you last week uh, in, in Slack. Um, apparently just delivered to my doorstep is the Blu-ray oh. uh, Rock and Rule collector's edition oh here it is uh when did this come out 84 83 something maybe uh, rotten tomatoes ces is css is busted i can't get it oh, to work right I, i'd be amazed if that thing has anything on oh, there it is rock and roll no tomato yeah. score 50 yeah. percent oh that's night of the museum sorry because this thing's all messed up it's, it's putting people yeah there's no score because it's old it's right? so early yeah it's 1983 yeah and, they'll uh, they'll oftentimes go back and find old reviews for movies but this one has none um, here's the link, guys. Also, chat room, can you tell me if it's all jacked up on your end as well? Or is it just me? Because that their CES, if you scroll down, is all foobard. Anyway. Uh, looks okay to me. Does it? C you're talking about their CSS? Yeah, like their it's just their sidebar stuff. You scroll down, you're getting a lot of weirdness? Nope, looks okay to me. Okay, must be Chrome on my end. Turn it off and turn it on again. Who was that animal? 
<laughs> Final call. This one's about dreams. We like to share our dreams. Oh, Here you dreams. go. Hey, Scott and Brian. This is Mike DeVoe. Um, I heard on yesterday's show. Hold on. Bill Mike DeVoe. Just want to put that out there. All right. <laughs> so, Scott, you were saying that you was um, having really weird, vivid dreams. And um, I just wanted to, if you're still taking that melatonin, I was taking it a couple years ago and I had to quit. Because every night I was having these freaky, vivid dreams. Like one night was me and my mom riding griffins from my house to her house. <laughs> the next day was my dad in a hospital bed in our driveway with all these colorful red, blue, and green fluorescent tubes running out of him and do doctors in white masks running all around him. And just every night. And as soon as I quit taking the melatonin, it um, kind of subsided a little bit. So... You might check into that. Yeah. Love the show. I don't take it very uh, By the way, where just... could I buy me some melatonin? <laughs> I love his. My check into that. Love the show. <laughs> like it's the greatest advice ever. I don't know if uh, that's a problem because I hardly ever take it. And also, my dreams haven't been too bad lately. But um, yeah, it's uh, we're oh, speak, I mean, you know what? I may as well explain this now. So people are wondering, we're no PM show last week. What happened? Is my feed broken? Blah blah blah. No, Scott was sick as a dog and couldn't make a show. It wasn't Brian's fault. It wasn't your fault, chat room, or anyone else. It was me. <laughs> Let's blame the chat room. <laughs> yeah, it's, your, it's usually your fault, but not today, uh, right. chat room. It was mine. I was sick, and I couldn't. I just could not muscle another show that day. So I apologize. I appreciate you guys understanding. Hopefully you do. Uh, usually we're good, but, uh, man, last couple Thursdays. It's been, a rough, it's been a rough month. I don't talk about it on the show very much, but some... There's there's stuff, you've and I, it, yeah, I'm working through it. it. You know, we're getting time. there, trying to, trying to avoid surgery. That's the big goal right now. If I can, I will. If I can't, well, that'll that'll put me out for a few shows. But uh, yeah, everybody, I appreciate your collective worry and whatever. Um, but it's uh, I'm one of those weird cases. The you know a third of people have what I have and never know it. Twenty percent of those have a problem. Another ten percent of those have recurring problems. I'm in the ten percent. So. Take that in your, take that and wrap it around your chode. All right, Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's the show. <laughs> I'm so oh. negative about it. Uh, we're done. Uh, let's uh, let's get the up. hell out of here. Say what? You're fed up with it. Yeah, I'm fed up. I really am. I'm sick of it. The human body can blow me. <laughs> I'm kind of done with it. Um, all right, let's uh, let's call it a show. We'll be back tomorrow with all this stuff. It's, you know, assuming everything goes well, should be fine. Uh, frogpants.com slash TMS is our website. You can find us at themorningstream at gmail.com. 801-471-0462 is our voicemail line. Use it frequently. On Twitter, you can find us at Morning Stream, Scott Johnson, and Coverville. And last thing I'll say is there was a nice uh, nice bit of good news yesterday. Uh, finished moving some servers around. And as of today, as soon as I post the show, the RSS feed, if you are subscribed to it through your app or through iTunes or wherever... Uh, the manual iTunes download may not work because they cache it themselves. So that's got nothing to do with me. But if you subscribe to the show via iTunes, like actually subscribe to it via iTunes or your app or whatever, you'll get it immediately. No longer are there like three-hour gaps of oh, like wow. cache-clearing server bullcrap. Cool. That's all gone. Oh, you that's know, great news. Immediately, immediately get it. So be happy about that. All right. Uh, that's it. Brian, you got anything else? We good? Oh, uh, one last else. one one last reminder about uh, give them one more, more uh, one more Kickstarter oh, yeah. blast here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny.cc slash Star Wars Jazz. You guys have been great. Been seeing a lot of buy, uh, a lot of purchasing or a lot of backing uh, during the show today. So keep it going. Let's get this thing funded before tomorrow, so I don't have to sit there and stew about it and and uh, watch the timer with my nails uh, chewing my nails. <laughs> Dude, people don't realize this running Kickstarters. One of the most stressful things on earth. My God, it really is. Yep. And we keep doing it to ourselves. <laughs> I know, I know. And it's not I like almost... anybody walks away with bank either. It's like, no, everyone, bear, we all kind of just cover what we need to cover every time right. one of these happens. It's That's so exactly stressful. It. I mean, because basically you want it to cover more than anything, yeah. right? So basically you say, all right, what is the, you know, what's this going to cost? What's this going to cost? And you basically figure out all those things and you add a little bit just of like, just in case stuff goes awry. So, um, it, cause if you go lofty, if you say, oh yeah, I want to make sure that I get some profit out of this, it's going to decrease your chances to fund. So yeah. you're going to get nothing. You're not going to be able to do the thing you want. So you basically have to, have to go as low as you can. And that's what we've done here. So yeah. even, uh, uh, 
Andrew and I, there's no paycheck amount <laughs> in this thing. We have to pay the, the other musicians, but uh, Andrew and I don't get uh, any money out of this. We get the joy of having... Um, it's the creation, man. It's the creation. It's being able to hold this CD in my hand and say, look at this, another another Coverville Records release. Mm -hmm. So make it happen, people. Yeah, help them out. Let's keep Brian less stressed. Yeah, uh, please, for yeah. Pete's sake. I'll take all the stress. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, as Wendy always says, yeah. all right, let's get yeah. out of here. <laughs> you got a song for me? I do. Matt wrote in and said, uh, me and the family are moving from the Boston area to Charlotte, North Carolina. We have decided to opt out of eight foot snowstorms. Man, I don't blame you. My dad and I are driving down first. We'd love a cover of a good road song.